You're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a special 30-minute edition of Greater Brockton. That only means one thing, Gary Leonard. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Um, we do updates on a regular basis about all the good news that's happening. Well, that's all I talk about. I don't talk about any negative things at all. The redevelopment, the revitalization, the renaissance, whatever you want to say, um, making a lot of progress in downtown, working on Campello, going over to Montello. And the One engagement block. of the citizens of Brockton is incredible. Right. So. And there's nothing more engaging than this time of year. You're okay? absolutely we're, right. We're in November. Uh, we are right before Thanksgiving, but we're going to use this show as much as we can between now and the end of the year. You are show 300. Oh, jeez, okay? I'm, I'm honored. Okay, and 300 is a lot of, so we did 300 segments in about four or five 30-minute segments, and you've right. been all of those. All of those. Okay. So what do you I'm have? sorry to take up all your time. No, no, no. It's just because you and I can't talk for nine minutes. That, it does that's not the problem. Work. It you, doesn't work. If 30 minutes isn't enough, we could talk for an hour. We could talk for two hours. We certainly we probably could. could talk for 10 hours. And it's all concrete stuff. It absolutely is. So what's new and different? What's coming up? Um, I know we're getting ready to, to go to small business Saturday. And I'm an advocate for the small businesses that make up our tax base here in the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. And they're all engaging and uh, the American Express uh, has run a national campaign for Small Business Saturday. And of course we have a lot of activities happening on Saturday. We have before and we have after. Okay. Before we know we have at City Hall the day before um, they're going to be up there with Santa and up at City Hall Plaza. And uh, on the day after, Stacy Adams is uh, having a uh, open house. And uh, let me just read it off there. So when you say the day before and the day after, you're talking the day before the holiday parade. That is which correct. Is the 25th. That is the correct. Small Business Saturday itself is on parade day. It certainly is. Okay. And, and then the Stacy Adams thing is the 27th. The right? Stacy Adams thing is the 26th, oh, it's right after, after the, the parade. parade. Okay. Right after Which the is parade. good this year because I don't have a class reunion because one of the years I did the I'm parade, I went right to my, I think it was my 35th reunion. Was it really? I went right to the parade, I mean right to the reunion afterwards, so it really didn't have a lot of time to, uh, you know, get, get, get my act together. But um, Well, I'm glad you only had your 35th because I just oh. had mine last week. I couldn't attend because my mother had passed away, as I you know, well I'm know. Sorry about that. And uh, as we all are, but uh, again, my class reunion. But I can't tell you how many years it's been. You're I'd be still youthful. <laughs> you still have more hair than I do. <laughs> um, my, my next one is forty. Ah, uh, I, well, I just joined the fifty-five club. Uh, well, okay, but I have students that keep me young because I teach at Massasoit, and as long as I'm teaching, oh yes, I can I, subtract a few years from, well, from 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 the equation. I've been so, using that same formula for many years, but it's not working anymore. <laughs> There you go. So, so the state, Stacy Adams has turned into kind of a cultural mecca. We were there for the Downtown Brockton Arts and Music Festival yes. this year. There have been all sorts of gallery ex, 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 expositions, yes, it has. tours, tie in the James Edgar Park to, to that. Um, that was a dead space. That was a scary space. Now it's a productive space, it's a beautiful space and it's kind of a happening space. Mike, we're not just talking about the building itself and the space that's in it. Uh, he's done a remarkable job and he's sunk a lot of money and, sure. and sweat into this uh, project, but he's changing neighborhoods. Right. This right. is a neighborhood that was infiltrated with drugs, prostitution, and crime. Mm -hmm. I mean, for many, many years uh, it, it was vacated and this is what they use as that haven. And Steve uh, and Howard Meiselman and Steve Torrey have, uh, d through a lot of convincing of myself, yeah. uh, um, they were eventually, uh, uh, initially I should say, we're going to make it into residential housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, through a lot of conversation and uh, introduction to Steve and to the people in the arts and cultural industry here in the city of Brockton, I was able to coerce him into looking at a different venue for something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has now 68 units over there, studio units. He's more than 50% uh, occupied. And their talent runs from uh, producing uh, radio shows and TV shows to people who do actually pole dancing. And pole dancing, I didn't realize, is an art for yoga. Okay. Um, I guess this is used in their exercising uh, in the yoga uh, talents and uh, uh, it's become very popular and the girl that runs it over there has over 35 students. Mm -hmm. And I hate to tell you that they're most of them are my age. Wow. 
But I guess I don't hate to tell you that because I'm pretty I, I'm intrigued by the uh, age and they're still wanting to make sure that they're looking good. And so. there's everything in there. There's a church that meets over there. There's a, two churches. Two that, churches. Two okay. churches that meet over there. Uh, Steve is a very generous guy. Is Sound Lab there? Or am I mistaken? Sound they're, Lab, they're, they're, they're on Center Street. They're on Center Street, okay, but okay. Uh, eventually, I, in, in talking uh, to the owner of Sound Lab, uh, they're considering moving over to the Stacey Adam building. That's where it's all happening. It really is. It um, really is. And I used to live around the corner for a little while in, in the Kennedy compound, compound on Winthrop Street. Yes. And when I lived there, it was scary. There were dilapidated houses on Winthrop Street. There was one right next to Tommy Kennedy and Mary Kennedy's house right. that they tore down. They have a nice parking lot there. They have an Irish flag. And you don't get tickets for on-street parking during a snowstorm. You got that okay. right. You got that um, right. But it, it's well lit too, it and is that's well lit. and that's what's intriguing. It, it lights up not just the building itself, but it lights up all the parking lots and and the street itself, and uh, you feel very safe. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. We need people to come out of their houses, feel safe. And Steve has offered to open up his studios so you can see the talent. From door to door, studio to studio, they will open the doors, they will dance for you, they will sing for you, they'll play their instruments for you, they'll show you how to produce radio shows right, right there on site, and uh, you're welcome to become students of these teachers. There you go. So that is the 26th of November. That is okay, the 26th of November. We're going to keep this show going as long as we can in terms of other events. What right. Else you this is from 3 to 6. Three I just to need six. Okay. 3 to 6 p.m. So right and after that's at the 33 point. Dover Street on the corner of Warren Avenue, in Dover. Okay. Okay. What do you have next? Well, of course, we all know, uh, we heard John Mary many times, and John is the band leader of the 30th Annual Brockton uh, Holiday Parade, and that's going to be also Saturday on November 26th at 1 p.m., and the theme of this parade is Broadway musicals. Mm -hmm. Now, we had quite a few contestants last year with the floats. Um, I believe that we have even more floats in this year. Um, I just happened to be picked as one of the judges. Okay. So I'm looking for the best looking and the best person that can project the theme of the uh, Broadway musicals so uh, they can win a prize up to $1,500. Yeah, John was telling us uh, we did a little quick segment with him on Greater Brockton, 1500 1500 That's kind of an incentive. It People have done was. it in the past for no money. So this is a real nice incentive. It certainly and everybody's is. Everybody's together on this. This started out back in the day as a Brock and Rotary Club event. Yes, Back it was. Back in the days of John Drystad, Hugo, Hugo Paparo, and, and Joe, Joe Joseph. Joseph. Yep, okay. Joe Joseph. So now it's Downtown Brockton Association, DBA, Campello Business Association, Association. CBA, and Montello Business Association. It, it kind of goes with your vision that you and I have talked about for years yes. about linking engagement Main Street from one, one end to, to the, the other. other engagement okay. of everybody okay. absolutely working together for one common goal mm -hmm. and that's the better the citizens and the city itself here in Brockton and uh, you know you look at that day and you look at all the happy faces you look at all the different different faces it's all one Brockton that day, and that's the day that a lot of people come in from outside of Brockton. Outside of the Even city. Even the people that have heard bad things about Brockton or might be afraid of Brockton, there's never been an incident at that parade in 30 years. I've been involved in it for 25 myself, okay, through involvement with DBA and just covering it. My first official event that I covered when I got hired here was the parade. Correct. I wasn't even on the payroll yet, kind of like you before you started your job <laughs> and you just hit the ground running and uh, you got a whole bunch of group, the hospitals are all sponsors. All the, spon the Enterprise uh, BCA is one of our sponsors, Harbor One, Signature Healthcare, Eastern Bank, Metro South, TL Edwards, Tuxedos by Marion, uh, Rockland Trust, National Grid, Good Samaritans. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And it's just incredible that everybody's engaging. Everybody has the common purpose and everybody has the feel of Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and giving back. And, and, and this that is gives us a lot of wonderful parade. programming because everybody knows that we repeat that holiday parade. It goes all the way through the end of the year. It certainly we, does. We, we, we change it out about the time that we have the Brockton High School concert, uh, end, of the, end of December, but we tend to run it all the way through there. And that parade, 
is, is a wonderful parade. We have a great time. You asked John Marion how many people attended. He just gave me a projection before for a million. He says that's officially certified by an accounting agency, so I'll just have to believe him. John <laughs> is kind of Mr. Christmas and Mr. Edgar and Mr. Everything all rolled into one. Well, as I told you, John has made me one of the judges, and I'm supposed to count how many people are there. Yeah. Uh, so, because I'm up in the second floor of the parking garage. Oh, I, thought you, I thought it was an undisclosed location. I thought you were going to tell us where <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, wait a minute. I'm okay. going to move it this year. Yeah, well, we'll have to move it. We, we might actually move move our location because we want to see the judges and we want to see the parking garage and the side of the street we're on is going to be the newly renovated district attorney's Attorney office law enforcement complex for lack of yes. a better term and what people used to know as the federal building that is okay. correct um, that's exciting all it through certainly into itself is. because the offices that the DA was in were pretty run down at this point it's right across the street from the courthouse it makes perfect, perfect sense. sense and you're going to have the state police in there and everybody else, so it's going to it's going to contribute to a safer image, perception and, and, and image is what it's all about. Absolutely, you and I have talked about. So that's a good thing, good thing to come. Absolutely, um, everything's decorated downtown. City Hall Plaza is all redone, so it's everything's ending up stuff going on at City Hall Plaza that's that right. day, and uh, the real Christmas tree with the lights. Okay, real tree, well, not we have just two that. trees. Not just that, um, as you well know, as I was on your show last, I think it was last month, I told you that we put out 44 planters in Campello. Yeah. The rustic whiskey barrel look uh, with all the mums and flowers in them. Well, those are being now converted over to Christmas trees that are 24, and oh, a, okay. 24 inches to two and a half feet tall. And they'll be illuminated with solar lighting. Mm -hmm. And each of the barrels and the uh, Huntington, um, school children uh, are going to actually do a lantern march yeah. and decorate these little trees as they go around coming from Huntington School right down to the Lutheran Church. Okay. Uh, they're going to adopt uh, the barrels and take care of the maintenance and the uh, decorations on each of those barrels with the trees. So we're doing that lantern walk on Wednesday, December se uh, 7th and that's going to uh, be at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. and we're going to start right up to Huntington School and march right down to the Lutheran and we'll, the trees will already be, already be in place because the um, Agar Park Neighborhood Association has taken on the task of planting the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I can't say enough about the Agar Park Neighborhood Association head up by John Hayes. Uh, they just do phenomenal work and they're always down in Camp Pello, either cutting the grass, pulling the weeds, sweeping the sidewalks. Uh, actually, they've uh, uh, taken the time to go out onto people's property that are elderly people that weren't able to take care of their own lawn and whatnot. Sure. Um, he actually goes over on the lawns on South Street to the historical site. Well, you know what's nice? Lawns. You got Edgar Park in one part of the city, but Keep not Park. afraid to be in part of another part of the city. That's Keith right. Park, the same thing. Same thing. Also the same thing. And I know you guys are working on other associations too. Yes. Throughout the city. My hope down the road is uh, my old neighborhood where I grew up, the Ash Street Park. Um, the Bent Playground yes. um, has seen some pretty bad times yes. lately. And yes. It's been redone multiple times. Three times, um, yeah. And uh, I'm over in the Hancock Park area, and I know there's been some, some work done there. Mulberry Park was done. Yes. Uh, Mayor Carpenter, under his term, has really tried to reclaim a lot of the city parks. Yes, absolutely. And, and outdoor spaces because it's kind of a quality of life issue here in the city that, uh, you know, when I grew up and you grew up here, you had your neighborhood park. That's where you went. You went I actually had Brockton Fairgrounds. I, okay. I grew up right next to the fairgrounds. Okay, that was my park. Go. Okay. But okay. I played football on the Ash Street Playground. Right. I mentioned football. I played for Howard Johnson's when I was like eight years old. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's where I played. And uh, you want to see uh, rough terrain. That was rough terrain back then. Mm -hmm. Right now, people don't realize on when we grew up, how raw and how we took care of things ourselves. Right. Uh, now we have uh, uh, the opportunity to let other people, uh, like the city of Brockton, come in before us. All we have to do is just keep it up after they completely do it over. Right. And that's what we need to do, start engaging as neighbors into the parks. So if you live near a park, take a, bre a rake and a broom and go over there and with a few of your neighbors and let's clean it up. Well, when I lived over on Winthrop, uh, when Mary Virginia Curtis was alive, she made oh. sure that the whole neighborhood Virginia. turned out and did the clean up over there. And that's really what it takes if sure. you think about it. Yeah. Brockton does a Keep Brockton Beautiful Day once a year. 
There's right. still 364 other days. That is correct. Um, the only thing I used to get in trouble for is I'd go and do a cleanup and I wouldn't do my own lawn. But that's a whole nother story. That's uh, <laughs> My job's getting the pizzas. Yeah, they, yeah. They, well, that works too. And, and you and I have had a lot of fun on cleanup day. Oh, absolutely. To places. Uh, Mike Gallerani downtown. We had a whole group of kids that were working on that. We That's one of our of them, favorite yeah. events to do every year. It we go around is. to the different schools. Um, and I know there's a beautification committee. So what's and the- Ken Montero from uh, uh, over in Bridgewater brings uh, his crews over too, and they all engage. And they have a great time doing it. Stone they look Hill, forward Stone to Hill it. Stone Hill kids, Hill kids. Over here I mean, and... we are so lucky. We have so much help. But Brockton is a pretty big city. It sure is. It really and is. it it's, takes all these people. It is. So how is the current business climate here in the city? Is there anything you can tell us that might be new? I know sometimes when you're putting the deals together, you really can't talk about them until Til they it's pass. signed on the dotted line and they pass and stuff like that. I know there's been a lot of stuff. Um, I just attended an event recently put on by the planning department over at the Shaw, Shaw Center, Center. Mm -hmm. to, you know, dealing with the, the Brockton Blueprint. Blueprint and Okay, yeah. and uh, I know there's going to be more with that. but. Any, any, any new things that have been announced that are okay to publicize do you have well, you, well, no, we just opened up a brand new function hall over in the Camp Hello section. Right. Uh, per, called the Perfect per, Place. Fred Fontaine. Fred Fontaine's place. And that has really uh, uh, come off the ground running because he's doing a great job over there. Uh, he's getting bookings every single day. Uh, things are going great. He spent a lot of money uh, on atmosphere in, in there. Um, I just had a hungry person's dinner there, and mm -hmm. it was well attended, and the food was fantastic. And what he's going to do starting uh, December 1st, which is a Thursday, um, anything after um, uh, 5 to 8 o'clock, he's welcoming all open house for all business owners to come, relax, get informed of what's up and coming in Camp Hello area and what's happening in the greater Brockton area, and also to be informed on what's available for business people uh, as pertaining to facade improvement, uh, merchandising, uh, advertising, promotion, and design. Um, this is what Camp Hello Main Streets is all about, and we just want people to engage so they know exactly what's available to them. So Freddie has opened up his place, the perfect place, and um, that, that's up at the Kmart Plaza. Right. And uh, on the Thursday, December 1st, uh, from uh, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, it's open house to all business people. I don't know why people keep buzzing me. They know I'm on. You, you get calls all 24-7. Yes, so, I do. So. Um, <laughs> I haven't been, I missed the grand opening. I don't even remember why. I think we might have had an event or something we were covering. But there's nothing happening but, in Brockton, but, didn't you but, hear? But oh, this <laughs> I, I have my pick on a daily basis. Oh, I you and me two, both. Two or three things. So what's the capacity over there? Do you uh, know? 400. He's, 400. Got, he's okay. got capacity for 400 people. Okay. And does he able, is he able to like subdivide, does he have subdivisions? He does. Like? He um, actually, he has uh, three sections in there now, mm -hmm. but he's getting those uh, vinyl curtains to actually do a little soundproofing in there. Yeah. But that all comes in time. He's just getting off the ground now and he's very accommodating to everybody. Um, so do you all self a favor. Uh, if you own a business in Brockton, December 1st, five to eight, come on down. Uh, I think it's 2039 Main Street. And, and that's Kmart Plaza. And for those of you that have been here a while, it was Siciliano's. It was Guido O'Shea's. O'Shea's. It it's was been, Reed's Steakhouse. Reed's Steakhouse. <laughs> so they're, they're, that's all you got to know. Right near Kmart. Yes. Right near Kmart. Right in the front of now, Kmart. Now, let me ask you a question. Brand new CVS going up in Campello. Yes. A lot of work was done over there yes. to have it have a certain look with the with the brick. Yes. Um, it looks like it's a wonderful development. What happens when they move out of their other location? What happens to that location? Well, they Does that become available? Do they own that? They own that, that spot there. That's not owned by the uh, Steve Dropkin uh, from uh, Brockton Plaza Realty. Uh, he owns, uh, uh, it was the old Jiffy Lube. Right. Right on Main Street, he owned that, and he owns another parcel further up. Um, but that is a uh, parcel that is owned by uh, CVS itself, so it will e probably go on the market. Okay. And it's a great location, yeah. so it shouldn't be too hard to sell as long as it's, it's priced correctly. And we know that the, the Shaw's is still empty. Okay? The Shaw's is still because empty. Because it, it has to be, it can't that's be a supermarket. That, no, it can't, but that, again, is being uh, uh, evaluated by our planning department right. uh, as we do the blueprint for Brockton, uh, right. a lot of rezoning, and we're taking a very good look on the in and out of Brockton, believe me.
Mm -hmm. That is essential that we have a good looking in and out from West Bridgewater to Brockton and Brockton to West Bridgewater. And I know West Bridgewater is looking for the same thing because I'm very friendly with the selectmen over there. Right. And they've expressed to me that they'd like to see something happen with that uh, establishment as well. So um, push comes to shove and it will come. Uh, something will be done with that property. Now talk about, I know recently and I wasn't able to go to it either because there's just too many things. At an open house over in the enterprise block. Yes. Because they're trying to attract businesses to that yes. totally gutted facility. So it's all ready to build and put something in there. Anything on the horizon over there that you know about? Well, um, that actually, you can talk about. Well, I, I don't know if, you know, they're, they're a private concern. They don't really extend to me what they're interviewing for sure. prospects over there. But I do know that uh, they understand that 8,000 square feet is a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Now I understand each floor only has 4,000 square feet but it's one on top of the other. It's two mm -hmm. floors, basement and top. Um, that's a lot of space. So you need a real um, large established restaurant to go in there. Uh, it can't be a little mom and pop shop. Right. Uh, it would have to be a uh, very large established company and of course they'd have to have a track record in order for Trinity to actually uh, look at it as being sustainable there. Um, my suggestion is, uh, and I've expressed this many times, is take one floor and use it as a function facility as we build up the mixed use downtown here in Brockton sure. because we are getting more residents. You know that Trinity is also building another hundred plus units over there and we have our dedication from the uh, state uh, for the $10 million is, for our parking that's, garage. That's the next topic. Yep. Yay, yep. yay. And of course, 93 Center Street, the old Anklin or United Furniture Building, mm -hmm. that's also gonna have 54 units in that building. Uh, so yeah, residents are picking up here in the city of Brockton. So I feel that the bottom floor should probably use as a function facility for the people that are gonna be living down here. And the upstairs, uh, 4,000 square feet, yes, you can get a more, uh, uh, you can get an established restaurant, but yet they're not going to accommodate uh, 400 people at a time. Right. Uh, it's just a restaurant that you can ca come in for lunch and dinner or something of that nature, uh, maybe having a seating capacity of 200 or something like that. That's more realistic than 8,000 square feet using up just 4,000 square feet. So the parking garage, what's the timetable in that parking garage? And that is going to be behind, you know, off to the side where the Enzo Flats is? If you come off of Petronelli Way, yeah. it'll be right off, right in the middle where the parking lot is now. Okay. Right in the middle there, and they'll build on the side over And there. when, do you have any idea when they expect to break ground on that, or when they start to, I mean, it's, well, is the, it in design, or is it already designed? No, it has to go through design. The parking okay. study and everything's been done. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, it's probably talking about three years down the line. Here. Okay. But that's all right. Three years, on, I, I've already well, been this job three years, we, and it seems like it started we, yesterday. We talked about it being a long, slow, slow process. process. Yes. But continuing I, well, to, to, exactly. to build. To build up this housing is going to take two to three years. So again, the timing will be perfect for one another and the parking garage will be able to accommodate the tenancy because they'll be able to purchase parking like 93 Center Street. Right. right. Um, there'll be a little shuffling around by the parking authority where W.B. Mason parks over Railway Avenue now that will probably become part of the parking for the uh, Anglin building. But that building, once that goes, that to me is all, we talked about this the it's last time, that thing, yeah. is going to be a, 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 an outstanding building because oh. who's, is, is that Trinity too? Or is no, that, is no. that? Uh, it's privately owned by Yahia Abdel Monem, or okay. John Monem as he likes to call himself. Okay. John and I have been friends for over 35 years. Okay. Um, I sold John the properties. Okay. So uh, he never did anything with it uh, other than his own furniture store and it's storage all the way. He just stores all his furniture up and down. And finally, uh, he's come to retirement age, yeah. as we all do. And uh, he says, I'd like to leave a footprint here on the building and do something advantageous to the city. What can I do, Gary? Okay. And that was the first day I came into the office and uh, took this job. He, he, he was one of my first clients to call me and say, I want to do something with this building. Give me some ideas. Anything new with Corcoran? Nothing yet. Okay. The trigger will be pulled soon, though. Okay, because that is a diamond in the rough, too. I'll, I'll, see, I, it's been I, sold. Lo I know love it's been the old. historic buildings. Oh, me too. But it takes a lot to get them back up to where they used to be. 
Um, but it's not it's not impossible. It's not an impossible. Well, having a historic building isn't a bad thing because you get a lot of help. Right. I mean, that's how you make your numbers work, so you know whether it's going to be profitable or not. And that's the help that a lot of these investors and developers need. Without that tax credit incentive, it just doesn't make dollars and cents. Uh, nobody's going to uh, put apartments or renovate a building at a loss. So no bank is going to finance right. a building at a loss. So therefore, you have to make it make dollars and cents. And that's what the tax credits do. And then little things around the city like brand new Starbucks at the mall. Brand new Starbucks. You don't even have to get out of your driving. car. You just yep. got to go, go drive around it and there you go, you can take your, your Starbucks to go. And of course, it's conveniently on the other side, there's Dunkin' Donuts. Right, so right. So you pick your, your coffee, whatever you like, um, and, you, and, and you do it. You, you, you look around the city, lot, there's a lot of for sale signs, there's a lot of activity in the real estate market. Well, that's right because now. the prices are rising and the equitable value is now there in the properties and that's what people are capitalizing on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people, are, you know, they retired years ago and they've just been waiting for this day to happen so they can go to warmer climates, mm -hmm. go move in with other family. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different purposes, not just to get out of Brockton, right. but just that they come to an age and a time in their life where they want to either expand and go to live in warmer climates or live with family members. You and I both know that sometimes during the aging process with parents that yes. we've both dealt with, you need stair lifts if you have a set of stairs. Yes. You, you, not everybody bought Campanelli's that are all one level. You have that nice colonial or that. Remember, you had to be in the service when, the first, <laughs> when they first sold Campanelli houses. Exactly, That's what exactly. It was for. Um, what do you want to say about the welcome mat and the business climate in Brockton, about talking to you? It, it, it seems to me like everybody's talking to each other. Everybody's working together. You've got planning department. You've got the group you work for. you got, you know, it just seems to all be meshing. Well, because we have a great team. We have a great economic development team, uh, which can uh, prizes the Brockton 21st Century Corp, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, and the planning department in Brock, uh, Campello Main Streets. And uh, we meet every uh, other two, uh, Monday morning up at the planner's office, and we actually tell them exactly what our activities have been in the city and how can we enhance these. Mm -hmm. And we come up with some great ideas, and they're passed on to the mayor. And uh, actually Friday, the day before Small Business Saturday, the mayor is coming out with myself, and we're going to go business to business, welcoming people to the city of Brockton mm -hmm. and thanking them for making an investment here. And uh, we already hit about a dozen businesses throughout the city doing that. And that's always a good thing to do. And uh, the mayor and I do, do this uh, consistently throughout the summertime as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things come up where, you know, we get interrupted. Uh, he uh, has a police radio with him all the time. He hears something going wrong. Gary, I got to go. I'll show up at the businesses have a fanfare, and he'll probably meet me back there as soon as he finds out exactly what's going on in the city. But we have a very, uh, uh, the wheels are working, they're turning here in the city of Brockton. Everybody seems to be engaging. Um, uh, I'm always with the Haitian community, I'm always with the Cape Verdean, I'm with the Spanish community, and they're all getting along and getting together and they're making things happen. And this excites me to no end. As you can see, I'm almost out of my chair and, here. I and get look excited. At this infrastructure too. You look at West Elm Street now, finally coming to a reality. The, cur the sidewalks. It's always been a grand street, <laughs> and and that's been a long time in the coming. It sure has. That makes a big difference. There've been infrastructure, Tory Street, Tory street infrastructures. That's a big water main project. That's, oh. that's, that's, I mean, you live it every day because you live right Every day I have this detour okay. that takes and, me 20 and, minutes around. I think the, I go by your property before yeah, I can get home. Yeah, in the, in the former synagogue uh, the oh, project yes. over there with the, the oh, health complex that's They've going They've spent in over $2 million there. there already. Well, if you look at it, they, they got, I, when I went to the, the ribbon cutting, which was a little emotional for me because I raised my children there and sure, two bar mitzvahs there. But, they got a $6.8 million grant. So if they're $2 million in, they're still going from that point on. You bet your and life. It's, it, 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 they have a successful track record where they were. It's kind of a good use for the neighborhood. It doesn't encroach on the, on, on the residents that are right there. Nope. And once it's all in, 
You know, it could have been another subdivision. It could have been a lot of different things over there. I'm just okay. glad they decided that that was the location they wanted because they're going to make good neighbors. Yeah. I go up there and introduce myself all the time. I'm meeting different people up there. Um, I see a lot of construction. I pull into the parking lot, which is a big parking lot, as yeah. you all know. And I'll just go over there and talk to a few contractors. And I was lucky enough to talk to a few of the principals involved in the purchase sure. of the property. And they seem like great people. They really like Brockton. They love Brockton. And this is where they wanted to be, and they're so happy with their location. Okay, so, so one-stop shopping. What's your phone number so people can get a hold of you um, yeah, that want to do business in Brockton? That want to. You're telling me my half hour's up already? Is that I, what you're I just got the. the you one just got the two queue. one minute queue. You okay. got it. Okay, I'm at the Brockton 21st Century Corp. That is at 50 School Street on the second floor. My phone number is 508-586-0021, extension 115 on my cell phone, 508-802-2315, and you have it on redial. Absolutely. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for all the positive Always a pleasure, Mike. And all the good news and about Brockton. Thanks for the 300 show. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, faces, and good news about Brockton.